Hey, and welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your own chatbot with Autogen. And not just that, we're going to do with, of course, OpenAI API, but also LM Studio and Olama. This means you can run it on a local open source LLM for no cost. And you get to choose whatever model you want. And we'll be creating with all the updates from the recent versions of Autogen. Let's get started. Once you have your IDE open, which I use PyCharm Community Edition, it's free, link in the description. Go ahead and create a new project. Let's just call this Autogen Chat. Click Create, and then we'll come back whenever it's done. OK, now that it's done, open up the terminal, and we need to install one thing, and that's pip install pi autogen. Give that a minute, and we'll be back. All right, the first file we want to create is this JSON file that's going to hold our config properties. So right click, go to New, and just create a new file. Now we have to name it OAI config underscore list dot JSON. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. And what this is is just an array of config properties. And the first one we'll go over is LM Studio. So I have the model as LM Studio because the model name doesn't actually matter when it's local and open source. Well, at least for LM Studio. So I just have it here so we can filter in the main Python file by the same property. And then the API key, it's local open source, it doesn't matter. And then this is the base URL for LM Studio. Likewise, the next one, this is actually for Olama. The reason I have the model set to phi is because that's the model that I'm going to pull from Olama to use for this chatbot. And the API key, again, it doesn't matter because it's local source. And then this is the base URL for Olama. And of course, if you want to use OpenAI's API, you can get the model you want to use with your API key. OK, so now the next thing is we need to create the main Python file. So go ahead and right click your directory, new Python file, and just type in main. We only need two imports here, and that's going to be import autogen and import JSON. And now we're going to create a filter criteria variable, which is going to let us know which config of the list that we had to choose from. So we're going to type in filter criteria is equal to, and then the, we want the model property. So that's what we want to filter by. And you just type in an array here. And the model that we want is to use LM Studio first. We want we just want to use local. I put the OpenAI's API there so that you know, uh, so you have the config to use. But let's just use local open source. So LM Studio. And then we need to create the config list. So config list is going to be equal to autogen dot config list from JSON because it's a JSON file. And then that JSON file is called OAI config list .json. And then the filter dictionary is going to be equal to the filter criteria. OK, so it's going to look over here in the JSON file and say, here's LM Studio model. We're going to retrieve the API key and the base URL. And just so you can see this, I'm going to just have a uh, print config list here. Well, the next thing we need to make is an assistant agent. So we're going to say assistant is equual to autogen.assistantagent. Let's give them a name, something unique like assistant agent. And then we need to give them the LLM config. And this is the configuration properties basically for the LLM that we are going to use. So the first thing is we can set the cache seed because this can change. By default, this is set to 42. But let's say you run that once, and then the next time you want it to be 43. And that means whenever you run through this LLM again, you're going to get different results because if you set the cache seed to be the same and you rerun it again, it will just quickly print out what you already ran previously, which is useful in certain cases. And the next property is temperature. This can allow you to have more deviation in the results. So let's just set to 0.7. And then finally, the one that you actually need, because cache seed and temperature you don't need. But the one you need, though, is config list. OK, and we're just going to set this to the config list we created above. That wasn't too bad. Now let's move on to the user agent. So user is going to be equal to autogen.userproxyagent. And this is actually going to be you or me. OK, this we're going to be the ones talking to the LLM. Let's go over some of the properties here. First off, the name. Again, something super unique called user. And then the second property that we're going to have is the human input mode. OK, there are three modes here, always, never, and terminate. So we're going to say always. And what this means is that we are always going to have input every time the LLM returns a response back to us. First time we ask it to write a function, it says, OK, here's the function. And then we can say, no, nah, maybe we don't like it. Or you can say we like it and then just go ahead and move on to the next part. We're going to have the is termination message. So we're going to say lambda x x dot get content. So we're going to get the content of the response dot right strip and then dot ends with terminate. OK, so this is going to be the terminate message when we're just completely done. Then finally, we're going to have the code execution config. And what's going to happen is whenever the autogen assistant agent creates something for us, like some Python function, 
the user or you or me is we're going to test that and actually run the code. So the code execution config has a couple of properties that we can do something with that code that we test. The first one is work directory. So working directory. This means we can create a directory uh, that will store the Python file that the assistant agent created after we tested it. So let's just say coding. And then the next property is called use Docker. This in a recent update, this came out to where by default, they use Docker as the container to execute code. It's okay if you don't know what that means, but if you don't know what that means, then you just want this to be false. Okay. Cause otherwise if this is true, they're going to be looking to see if you have Docker running on your machine. And if you don't, you're going to get an error and you won't be able to run it. Okay. Awesome. Now there's just a couple things left. Uh, the next one, I'm just going to copy and paste. And what this is going to do is I want the LLM to write three total functions for me in Python. And you see here, I have to save the code to disk. Now, I'm going to quickly say that Augen seems to have a little bit of a problem where it won't exactly save the Python file that the LLM created. And when I looked into their FAQ section, if you put this save the code to disk, uh, that's the first thing you say. And what it'll do, it'll, it'll add the Python file name at the top of their code. So that's how it knows to save it to your local directory. And now we need some way to actually initiate the chat with the user and the LLM or the assistant agent. We do this by saying user dot initiate chat. And there are some parameters that we need to have here. The first one is the recipient. So the user is going to initiate the chat with the assistant agent here. So we'll just put in recipient, recipient equals assistant. You don't really need the recipient parameter here. Uh, it knows that that's the first one. So if you just put assistant, that also works as well. Then we have message is equal to message. This is the message that we're sending. And they have a couple of new recent parameters. The first one being silent, we're going to set this to false. If this was true, then it wouldn't show uh, all of the output, right? It would just perform this and then you would get the, just the response back at the end. Then summary prompt. This basically has the LLM based agent. So in this case, the assistant agent reflect back on the conversation and then create a summary. But that's only when the next property will be reflection with LLM, which we'll get to here in just a second. And this is the default prompt, which leads me to the last parameter summary method. And there's two options, either last or reflection with LLM. So whenever it's just last, that just gets the last response. Whereas when it's reflection with LLM, this will give you a more of a summary of uh, the conversation. And then finally, one more line, you can say JSON dot dump user dot chat messages. We want the assist with the assistant agent. And then we're gonna say open conversations dot JSON, right? So that we can create the file and then indent equals two. Okay, awesome. We're almost there. Let's just run LM Studio and get this started. Okay, if you haven't downloaded LM Studio already, I have a link in the description. You just literally go to the lmstudio.ai website, download the software, and just run it. It's pretty simple. And once you run it, you'll be greeted with this home screen here. The first thing we need to do is just download a model. Choose any one you want. You can either search for in the search bar here for a model that you, of your choosing, like Mistral or Llama. Or if you just want to test this out, if you scroll down, they have some recent ones that they've added, like Quen 1.5. So then you can click this download button. And whenever you download it, you open this up here and it's downloading the model for you. And then whenever it's done, you'll come over here on the left hand side, choose local server. At the top here, select a model to load. Just you'll choose a model. I'm actually going to choose the stable Zephyr because my computer can handle that better. So I'm going to choose that, load the model. And once that's done, there's this green button that says start server. Just click it and we're ready to go. Here is the URL that I put in the config list. Now that we're back, we're ready to run this. So just open up the terminal and just type in Python three main.py and run it. Okay. So it ran. And then what we can see here, the assistant agent to me, uh, it, it created three functions here, uh, the palindrome count characters and square root calculation. What you don't see here, uh, it just happened to not be in this example. It didn't put the file name here. And what happened was I just came here and I hit, I just hit enter. So it would move on the conversation. Whenever you, whenever you do that, that means whenever you're ready to move on, no human input received using auto reply. And this means that it's going to execute the code up here. See, this is wrapped in three tick marks and then Python and more three tick marks. That means it's going to execute that code. And I did, and it was successful. There were no errors. And then I hit, and it responded back with terminate, which doesn't like mean anything. I just hit enter and it's not really doing anything at this point now, right? But what it did create it, however, 
you see here, there is a coding folder that it created, but didn't actually put the Python file in there. It doesn't always work. It could also be the model. I'm just using a very simple model, but we were able to run it locally. Now let's move over to Olama. Okay, so to get Olama working, this is simple. I first, I'm gonna have the download URL in my description. So just go there, download Olama and just run it. And if you're on a Mac, you know you're running it because it'll be up here with the little llama symbol and on Windows, it'll be somewhere on your toolbar. And once that's running, the next thing we need to do is now pull a model to use with Olama. And in order to do that, open up your terminal, you're just gonna type in Olama pull and then the name of the model. So for instance, I'm gonna type in phi because that's what I wanna use for this test. And I already, I already pulled it, so it's already done, but it'll probably take a few minutes depending on uh, the size of the model. You will open up your OAI config list where I had this model for phi. If you have a different model, just put that here. Make sure you have the correct name of the model. You just put that there and then you go to main.py and for the filter criteria, just type in phi and then we're ready to go. And now all we need to do is just run the main Python file. So Python three main.py and we're ready to go. And it's going to start chatting with the phi model. Okay. So it ran and it came back and it gave us the functions. Count characters is palindrome and square root. It even gave us the import for this one. Now it's calling, this is calling me a liar, uh, but this actually isn't going to save either because what we need is after this, this triple tick mark with Python, it needs to have a hashtag with the file name. But also the point is that it worked locally. I'll also run this with OpenAI's API and see how that performs. All I did was come back up to the filter criteria variable, change the model so that it'll retrieve the API key as well. And then when we hit enter, it's gonna run for OpenAI's API. Okay, so this worked as well. And you can see here, there's a hashtag with the file name string underscore functions.py. And I have to be honest with you, it didn't do it the first time. I had to specifically tell it again during the conversation to add this, and then it did it for me. And which means that whenever it does that, and then I come down here as the user, you know, instead of, I just press enter to skip and it automatically uses the auto reply, which means it executes the code block. Great. You can import this module, use these functions and other scripts, blah, blah. I hit enter again. And then finally I hit terminate and in the is terminate message, whenever you see terminate, it just ends everything. And now in our project directory, there's a coding folder with the strings Python file. And this has all the functions that we asked it to create. And then finally we generated the conversations.json file and we have the save code to disk. This is the basic message that as the user we're giving to the assistant. And then the assistant came back and said, sure, here's the code for the functions, giving it back to the user. And then here's where I said, can you save the code to disk by adding the string functions.py to the start of the Python code to the assistant and you know, so forth and so forth, just so you can have uh, a dump of the chat conversation. Thank you for sticking around. And I hope you learned how to use open source LLMs with Autogen. LLM Studio and Olama are just two ways to do this. There are other ways, but these are common ways and they're easy to set up. Click here for more Autogen videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or suggestions on something that you want to know how to do, please let me know. Every Sunday at noon, I send out a newsletter that's free. There's a link in the description as well as the link to my GitHub. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.